you won't really get the most use out of the system until you start entering profiles for your rifle telescope combinations. And the next menu over is profiles. And we allow you to create a profile for an atmospheric condition if you have things that are repetitive and standard. Okay. Um, then we can change bullets, offsets, rifles. It essentially creates a file that can be reloaded into the system and reused. The most useful ones are the bullet, the rifle, and the turret, since that pretty much comprises a complete uh, system for a person. The rifle will have a particular telescope mounted on it 99.99% of the time. Um, that rifle will have you know, a fixed sight height, etc., and generally speaking, you're shooting one cartridge out of it. So right now I'm going to go ahead and load a, uh, a current rifle profile that I have on the system, and then we'll start taking it apart. I'll load the, uh, the 338 system. And what you'll see now <clears throat> is at the bottom of the screen it will indicate the particular rifle profile that's loaded, and on, then on the right it'll show the particular bullet profile that's loaded. So let's go ahead and start picking the profiles apart. <clears throat> if you go to um, Profiles Rifle, select Build Edit, this screen allows you to enter all of the standard information on your rifle. Um, the text up here at the top is just for you. Right? It doesn't affect the solution any. It just keeps track of which rifle, uh, what's the serial number, uh, what's the caliber or cartridge that you're using. The barrel twist rate is used to compute spin drift. Right? So if you have uh, you know, the known value for your twist rate, Go ahead and put that in. If you don't, it will work a presumed twist rate that we'll uh, have later in the bullet profile. If you have a specific one, you should enter it. Barrel length and rifle weight are just for your own notes, as is the miscellaneous box where you can simply add notes about the system to keep track of things yourself. Then at the bottom we have a bullet <clears throat> and turret button which allow you to connect a bullet profile and a turret profile to a particular rifle. Um, it's quite normal to have several rifles in your inventory, all of which are shooting uh, say M118 LR. Each one of them produces a slightly different velocity. Each one of those rifles may have a slightly different sight height, etc. So this system allows you to create a separate file for each one of those so that you can deal with the differences in those bullet, uh, bullets, uh, telescopes, etc. so that each one gets its own unique solution. Uh, also on the rifle page at the bottom are a couple of tabs. One is for uh, round count, right, where you can indicate dates, the number of rounds fired. So right now that's showing a cumulative. If I click the add item down at the bottom, it'll put up the current date. It'll ask you how many rounds are fired. It will automatically calculate a total for you, and you can enter some remarks. At any time, if you've gone to a page and you don't want um, that function, there'll be an abort or, uh, or cancel function on there. So I'm just going to abort because I don't want to add any round count there. Okay. Then there's also a notes page where you're free to enter 
you know, plain old text, and that text is attached to that rifle system. So if you're making notes about how you had a particular problem, you found a screw loose, uh, you know, or, or, or this, that, or the other thing, you have a way to make notes to yourself, you know, remember to check, you know, remember to check this, we had this problem last time. It's just a place for you to write notes to yourself. All right, each rifle will typically have a telescope attached with it, and that is labeled here as a turret profile. So if we go into opening, it selects the turret. I missed it and clicked Build Edit. This lets you enter the make and model of the telescope and any notes that you may have. And then in the middle, <clears throat> you have a unique feature where we list the scope click values. There are two boxes here. The first boxes labeled nominal are indicators for the actual value of the click as it's labeled on the turret. Uh, for this telescope, the Schmidt Bender 5 to 25, it's a milrad scope, so each indicator line is worth 0.1 mil on the knob. Then, to the right, you have a box for the actual value. It is relatively speaking rare that telescopes deliver exactly what the knob says they deliver. Part of what you need to do to make ballistic software match your field results is calibrate the entire system so that the software predicts what you actually get on the range. Okay? Just because the software says you're supposed to dial up X and you shoot and hit Y does not mean that the software is screwed up. It means that the software is simply improperly calibrated to your system. Okay? Um, the software will essentially give you a correct answer for the parameters that have been entered. Unfortunately, some people don't actually get the correct parameters in there. This telescope, for example, despite the fact that it's a super high dollar Schmidt Bender, you know, perfect telescope, does not actually deliver me 0.1 mil per click. If I go out and run the telescope up 100 mils, I actually get 103 mills of uh, ele uh, elevation. Okay. So <clears throat> here I've entered the actual value. We went out and calibrated it by actually dialing up 20 mil, physically measuring the distance between the, the two points. And then there's a little calculator here in the system. If you don't want to hand calculate it yourself, we'll show you the calculator in a minute. And that tells me that my scope actually delivers 1.03. We'll enter the zero. <clears throat> what is the zero range? What is the center of the bore line to the center of the scope, the height over the bore? Right? There's an option here for incomplete final revolution, IFR. Uh, the double turn Schmidt Bender telescope doesn't actually come back to zero. It goes past zero once and then finishes before it hits zero again. Okay. The item for fixed, fixed zero deals with people primarily who zero at a longer range than 100. If you zero the rifle at 500 yards, let's say, day to day your zero is literally going to change because the environmental conditions will change and your zero would drift you know, further out, closer in, depending upon what happened to the atmosphere. This lets you zero under those given conditions at that longer range, and then essentially internally resets the zero point when the conditions change from the conditions under which you did the zero. That lets you put that long range zero on it, but still lets the elevation calculation be correct. Right? 
I normally leave it checked, even though with a 100-yard zero, it probably doesn't affect it in any meaningful fashion unless you go from, say, Death Valley to the Hindu Kush, you know, from one day to the other. Um, but I just leave it checked as a matter of course. If your turret is a multi-turn system, um, for example, the, you know, the standard loophole knob or the uh, standard night force dot knob, uh, uncheck IFR and tell it it's multi-rev. Then you have the little vernier hash marks that tell you which revolution you're on. You can use the up-down button here to tell me which revolution of the knob you're on, so you can always return to zero, and it'll tell you X number of turns up and X number of turns down uh, as it's giving you solutions. All right, the last item here at the bottom of the screen is a scale value and then the number of clicks. Normally your telescope will have a, uh, a series of small lines and then a cardinal number with a long line. This lets you put that cardinal number and then the number of clicks required to get to it. So if uh, this scope is already set up, so if I just start scrolling through the data points, you'll see that at 10 clicks, I'm on the scale mark number one. At 20 clicks, I'm on the scale number two, um, and so forth. If I uh, open, let's open a, a minute-based telescope. We'll open one of the, uh, one of the loopholes. Whoops, that's an M5 knob. That's really not going to change anything, is it? Let's open something. Yeah, here we go. Uh, an M1 knob. All right, the M1 knobs are nominally quarter minute per click. <clears throat> they are multi-revolution. And now, as I scroll through the data points, scale number one is only four clicks. Scale item number two is eight clicks, all the way on up until we get to, keep going, 14 is 56 clicks. 15, i.e. we're back on zero, is 60 clicks. Okay. This will be used, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and load that file. Okay. Now that we have a turret loaded, if you look at the bottom where it says turret solution, this particular solution is telling me to come up one full turn, right, the one in braces, two minutes plus two more clicks to get to a total elevation of 17.5 minutes. If my turret values weren't precise, right now we're assuming, right, I, I've got the telescope entered, as if it's exactly quarter minute to a click. Well, like I said, that rarely happens. So we'll go back to the turret. And let's change it to say that it's 0.255 per click. Seems like a pretty small difference, but we'll save it. And then we'll load it. 